what's going on guys i hope you're all doing well i'm so kind of back with a brand new video over on super duper tech and in today's video i will be using a range of different benchmarking tools to benchmark a mac mini now if you guys could just take a second out of your time to hit the subscribe button or the like button towards the end of the video it would be greatly appreciated without any further ado let's hit the tiles as I do with all of my benchmark tests I have compiled a simple table to which you can easily understand all the tests as well as the results. Now as always the first test that I have conducted is a simple Geekbench test. Now Geekbench 3 has a number of features that are designed to test and simulate real world scenarios and then provides us with a score based on how the hardware handled the tasks and as you can tell the 32-bit scores for both the single and multi-core scores were 2,531 as well as 4,821. Whereas on the 64-bit side, we were looking at a single core score of around 2,785 when compared to the multi-core score of 5,421. Now the next test that I did conduct was a GFX bench test which tested metal. And in this test in particular, you would hope to see the frames per second number be a lot higher, thus meaning that the animation was a lot smoother. Now GFX Bench does test out a number of aspects, and what I have done is averaged out to give us the frames per second figure. Now as you can see, for the higher intensive tasks, I did get a frames per second figure of around 43 frames per second, whereas with the lower intensive tasks, I did get around 55 frames per second which is to be expected seeing as they are not as graphically intensive. Now the next test that I did conduct was again from GFX Bench but instead of testing Metal this time I tested OpenGL. Now the interesting thing about OpenGL when compared to Metal is that it also renders both on screen and off screen. Now as you can see for the on screen high intensive tasks I did get around 43 frames per second. Now when compared to the lower intensive tasks, I did get an average of around 55 frames per second. And when looking at the off-screen tasks, I did average around 56 frames per second on the high intensive tasks and around 66 frames per second on the lower intensive tasks, which is again to be expected seeing as the lower intensive tasks are exactly that they're a bit lower in intensity. Now the next test that I did conduct was a disk speed test to test out the read and write speeds of the hard drive itself. Now the baseline Mac mini does come with a 500 gigabyte mechanical hard drive which spins at 5400 RPM and the read and write speeds that I was getting was around 94 megabits per second on the read sides and around 115 on the right. Now this really does affect the performance of the machine itself. Not only does it take a while for programs and applications to load, it also takes quite a considerable time to turn on this Mac Mini. Now the next test that I did conduct was NovaBench. Now NovaBench tests a number of aspects of the hardware on the machine, from the RAM to the processor to the graphical render capabilities of the machine itself. Now, as you can see, Novabench gave me a score of around 586. Now, the next test that I did conduct was a basic Wi-Fi speed test. Now, as you can see, I was getting download speeds of around 21 megabytes per second, as well as around 19 megabytes per second on the upload side. The next test that I did conduct was Cinebench. Now, Cinebench gave me an OpenGL score of around 23 frames per second as well as a CPU score of 232 CB. Now the final test that I did conduct was a 4K export. Now the video that I did export had a length of around 5 minutes 20 seconds. In fact it is my 2016 12 inch Retina MacBook unboxing video. Now I've used this video on the 
11 inch MacBook Air, the 12 inch Retina MacBook, as well as my late 2015 5K iMac. And now I'm using it again with this Mac mini. Now this just gives us all a ginormous amount of data towards the end of this year where I can compile it to give you a result of which of these baseline Mac products exports a 4K file fastest. As you can see, it rendered out this 5 minute 20 video in around 3 minutes 50 seconds, which surprise surprise is actually faster than the 11 inch MacBook Air. Now you can click the card in the top right hand side of this video to go and check that benchmark test out. So guys, that has been it for today's video. If you did enjoy it, then leave it a thumbs up rating. If you didn't quite like it, leave it a dislike rating, but leave some criticism down below in the comment section as to how you believe I can further improve the videos. At the end of this outro, I will leave a video clip so you can go and check out how I conducted all of these tests for the benchmarks that you saw in today's video. If you have got any questions, then do feel free to go and hit me up over on Twitter. I will start live streaming over on Periscope so you guys can see behind the scenes when I unbox new videos or when I'm editing or even if I just want to talk to you guys. Add me over on Snapchat to obviously Snapchat me and we can, we can have a discussion, a conversation and you never know I might start featuring you guys Snapchat or your suggestions in a video. So guys that has been it for today. Hope you did enjoy it. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good one.